have a good time Put a smile on your face, yeah Can't be caring, relation radio mm-hmm. Even brighten your day tell you there is good news. The Lord is good and his mercy endures throughout all generations. Well, listen, we welcome you to the Just For You podcast with Pastor Michelle Y. Wright. We are extremely overjoyed for the Lord is good and he is worthy to be praised. Listen, if this is your first time listening to the Just For You podcast, we would love to share with you what the Just for Pod, Just for You podcast is all about. I am so 
excited, you guys, because God has been so good to each and every one of us. Listen, do you recognize when you woke up this morning, you didn't have to open your eyes. You didn't have to be able to move or breathe or do anything. But whatever condition we're in right now, he's still good and he's worthy to be praised. Let me share with you what the Just For You podcast is all about. The Just For You podcast is designed to encourage, empower, and engage listeners to thrive spiritually and naturally utilizing biblical principles. That's biblical principles. And Just For You will reveal truths embedded in the Holy Bible to illustrate kingdom living soul winning, compassions and strategies to serve mankind, making a difference locally and globally. Just for you will allow listeners to hear teachings that are applicable, guests that will inspire, and opportunities for serving more effectively in the home, church, school, community, and marketplace. That is what Just For You is all about. I am just so excited. Uh, God has been so good to each and every one of us. I'd like to send a shout out to our very own Dr. Kimmy Robinson. She's our visionary and CEO of Elation Radio. And we have two phenomenal guests on today. You're going to hear more about their stories, their lives, and how they give God the glory in all that they do. Our guests today are Calvin Logan the Second, and also Jasmine Johnson Anderson, two wonderful faith-filled believers that are doing what God has required of them to do, and I'm sure they have a word for you. Before we begin, I want to share with you, there's so much in the world going on today. We're going to touch base with that a little bit, but more importantly, we want to share the good news, which is that life is worth living and is especially blessed when you have the Lord. I want to share with you on today, we're going to be talking about favor with the king. But before we begin, we'd love for you to join us in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity to serve. We thank you for all that is going on in and through our lives, in our communities, in our homes, our churches, everywhere that we are. We thank you for being with us. No matter what it looks like or feels like, you are God and you are great. We want to say thank you for bringing us through another week. And on today, We ask that you come in and have your divine will and way. Show yourself mighty. Show yourself strong. And we give you the glory in advance for what you've done and what you're about to do. You are a mighty God. You are a great God. We are thankful for your love. We're thankful for your grace. We're thankful for your mercy. We're thankful for all that we have. We're thankful for what we don't have. We are thankful because we recognize It's not just praising you when we have everything. It's especially praising you when things are not so well. So I want to just say thank you for it all, every trial and tribulation. I want to say thank you for all the listeners that are listening in from week to week. And, God, you be with them. You bless them. You know what they need, and we honor you for that. Bless our guests, Calvin Logan II and also Jasmine Johnson Anderson. Keep your hand upon their families and their lives and their businesses and ministries. And, Father, understand spoken request, whatever someone's believing you for on today, I ask that you provide, heal, deliver, strengthen whatever is needed on today. We trust you for it. Have your divine will and way, and we will trust you even the more. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. As we were talking, I thank you so much for praying with me. As we were talking in the beginning, we said we are going to be talking about favor with the king. I'm going to say that again. It's favor with the king. We begin every podcast with our prayer, our exhortation, and these exhortations are given to give you strength through the week, give you strength and remind you how powerful our God is. He is able to do anything but fail. Hallelujah. We bless God for that, and I want you to be encouraged on this week. 
There's nothing like when God comes in a situation and helps out and makes it right. We're going to talk about some amazing things that he has done and that he continues to do that we may have life and have it more abundantly. I tell you, it's important to understand you have been born for such a time as this. Do you recognize how many people have not been able to perceive or understand the very thing that is in their environment, the very thing that is working in their situations? They have not been able to see the hand of God. I want to share with you about a very special person in the Bible, and I want you to get this in your spirit because I know it's going to bless you and say, help you and then understand how important and how powerful it is to trust God. We'll be studying from Nehemiah, the second chapter, beginning with the first verse. In the month of Nisan, in the 20th year of King Axaxerxes, forgive me on that one, when wine was brought for him, I took the wine and gave it to the king, and I had not been sad uh, I'm sorry, let me just go back because I want to make sure this is the version that I had. Yes, it is. I'm sorry. Let me just go ahead. So let me begin again. The second chapter, first verse. In the month of Nisan, in the 20th year of King Arterzek, or wreaths, when wine was brought for him, I took the wine and gave it to the king. I had not been sad in the presence before. So the king asked me, why does your face look so sad when you are not ill? This can be nothing but sadness of heart. I was very much afraid, but I said to the king, may the king live forever. Why should my face not look sad when the city where my ancestors are buried lies in ruins and its gates have been destroyed by fire? The king said to me, what is it that you want? Then I prayed to the God of heaven, and I answered the king, if it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor in his sight, let him send me to the city in Judah where my ancestors are buried, hallelujah, so that I can rebuild it. Then the king with the queen sitting beside him asked me, how long will your journey take and when will you get back? It pleased the king to send me, so I set a time. I also said to him, if it pleases the king, may I have letters to the governors of trans-Euphrates so that they will provide me with safe conduct until I arrive in Judah? And may I have a letter to Asaph, keeper of the royal park, so he will give me timber to make beams for the gates of the citadel by the temple and for the city wall and for the residence I will occupy. And because the gracious hand of my God was on me, the king granted my request. So I went to the governors of Trans-Euphrates and gave them the king's letters. The king also had sent army officers and cavalry with me. When Sanballat and, uh, well, let's go back. When Sanballat the Horonite and Tobiah the Amorite officially heard about this, they were very much disturbed that someone had come to promote the welfare of the Israelites, my God, today. I went to Jerusalem, and after staying there three days, I sat out during the night with a few others. I had not told anyone that my God had put what my God had put in my heart to do for Jerusalem. There were no mounts with me except the one I was on. Hallelujah. By night, I went out through the, ga- the valley gate toward the jackal well and the dune, I'm sorry, that's dung gate, examining the walls of Jerusalem, which had been broken down, and its gates, which had been destroyed by fire. Then I moved on toward the fountain gate and the king's pool, but there was not enough room for my mount to get through. So I went up the valley by night, entering, <clears throat> examining the wall. Finally, I turned back and re-entered through the valley gate, the officials did not know where I had gone or what 
I was doing because as yet I had said nothing to the Jews or the priests or the nobles or officials or any others who would be doing the work. Then I said to them, you see the trouble we are in? Jerusalem lies in ruins, and the gates have been burned with fire. Come, let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem, and we will no longer be in disgrace. I also told them about the gracious hand of my God on me and what the king had said to me. They replied, let us start rebuilding. So they began the good work. But when Sambal, the Harmonite, and Tobiah, the Amorite, official and Gresham, the Arab, heard about it, they mocked and ridiculed us. What is this you are doing, they asked. Are you rebelling against the king? I answered them, hallelujah, by saying, the God of heaven will give us success. We, his servants, will start rebuilding. But as for you, you have no share in Jerusalem or any claim or historic right to it. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. Why am I talking about Nehemiah II? Have you ever heard about what's been going on in the land in America that across the world people are looking to see who our God is? It wasn't but a couple of days ago, like yesterday, that there was a very televised case of a family who had lost a loved one called George Floyd. And the world awaited a verdict that they wanted to hear if justice would be made right. Listen, let me tell you something. When you have favor with the king, there is nothing but favor that will fall on your life. This man, Nehemiah, was a cupbearer to the king. I need someone to catch this. He was a servant, and he served his king and queen with love. He served them in a place that he could have a request before him. If you know anything about royalty, you just don't. Don't walk in and ask them anything. You need to be summoned in, and you need to have a grace with you that they'll listen to what you have to say. Is there anyone out there that has something that God has provided for them, that they have enough grace that they can run to him in the hour of need, and he will hear them? I want you to know Nehemiah understood the process. He understood who he was serving. He understood how to engage him. He understood how to live life that he would have favor upon him. And what I loved about Nehemiah, when he saw the land in ruins where his ancestors were, in other words, where he grew up, he saw there was fire that had destroyed and various things that tore down what was meant to be something special in his life. Is there something special in your life that in this atmosphere it has been torn down? Well, let me tell you what Nehemiah did. He didn't sit back and look at it. He didn't sit back and say, this is what I could do. Nehemiah went before the Lord. His strategy was to talk to God. And when he talked to God, God gave him the go ahead. Then God gave the king favor with Nehemiah. Are you listening to the process? And then after he got the favor from the king, he proceeded to do all that he needed to do. Listen, I need to tell somebody that everything Nehemiah needed was provided for him, from security to the uh, materials he needed, to the people that had to happen. But did you notice that Nehemiah said, I couldn't tell everybody what was going on and purposed in his heart. I want to talk to somebody today. When you're before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, you have to sit there when folk don't understand you. You have to be misunderstood. You have to be talked about, rejected, cut up one side, down the other. But I am here to encourage you to let you know, once the king has given his decree, it really doesn't matter. It is a process called life that we must go through. And we must understand when those trouble, uh, the times come that weigh us down or give us no hope that God is there. Nehemiah went ahead. He did what God ordained for him to do, and God provided what he needed. I need you to understand today, you may have some requests 
before the king. Are you talking to the right king? Are you calling on his name? His name is Jesus. Are you calling him and asking him to do something wonderful for you in your life that a difference can be made? See, what Nehemiah wanted wasn't just for himself. It was to rebuild for his generations. It was to rebuild something precious to his heart. What is so precious in your heart that you must see it rebuilt? I'm going to ask that question again. What is so precious in your life that you'd like to see it rebuilt? Not only that, God is concerned about the souls of man. On this week, all this week, we've been anticipating a result and an answer that only God can do. See, it is God that touches the heart of the jurors and the people that were in the courtroom to give the accountability for what happened with the family of George Floyd and with George Floyd's life. But there are countless others that God is saying justice is coming. When we say justice, we don't, and I'm sorry, I'm going to probably get in trouble for this, but we got to get our hearts right. Because the justice isn't just to see somebody condemned. That's the soul. What we need to pray for is for him to get saved too. And we need to pray for the family he's going to leave behind. Whether they understood, knew he did those things or not, God is concerned about the salvation of man. He is concerned about all of our lives. He is concerned that justice does come forth and shines rightly so. But he also wants a bigger testimony. Now let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about when we're going through rebuilding and the process and what must take place that God get all the glory. Are we fully understanding that the glory of the Lord is the sole purpose of what we do? We can build companies. We can build ministries. We can do the greatest things. But if he is your Lord and Savior and he is not being lifted up and glorified, then is it you? On today, may we have hearts like Nehemiah's. May we find ourselves in a place that God himself can look down and say, oh, that's my child. I'm sorry, what did you need? How fast do you need it? Angels from heaven, go down and see about them. I believe in releasing my angels whenever I'm in a tight spot. I don't worry about how tight it is. I don't even worry about the outcome. I use biblical principle to say, I need you now, God. Would you hear my prayer? This is what's going on. This is what I need. This is how I need it. Would you send help my way? And he has reminded me because of the blood of Jesus and all that took place on Calvary's cross, I have a Authority in his word to ask and it shall be given to seek and we shall find to knock and the door shall be open. Are you asking, seeking and knocking on today? Are there pressing issues on your heart that only God can fix for you? Are you walking down a path that seems like you're all alone, but yet there is a God that hears, answers, and takes care of you? I want to encourage you because there are so many things going on when we look outside, when we look at various situations. But if I can still tell you the good news, the good news is this. He was God then. He's God now, and he'll forever be God if we allow him in our lives. Do you have that relationship with him that you can run to him? Whether it's 20, he's a 24-hour God. You don't have to come to him just during the day and business hours. You can talk to him in the middle of the night. You can talk to him when your heart is grieved or when you're blessed with something or whatever you need to say to him. And that relationship becomes enriched. If you don't know him in your sins, 
I encourage you to get to know him. I encourage you to look at a God that's never lost a battle. I encourage you to understand he's for you. He's for you. And he loves you. And he's concerned about you. I know Nehemiah left us with a very powerful message that one, we should be serving. And when we serve from our depth of our heart with the heart of God, God will make a way for all the things that we need to do in our lives. I've never seen a kingdom where you never acknowledge the king. I'm going to leave you with that. I've never seen a kingdom that talked about how great it was without its leader and everybody is doing what they want to do. Whatever it is we're called to do from him, we must acknowledge him. And when he gives us the plan, whether understood or not, we have to stand firm and say, thank you, Lord, for having the grace upon me that you would even hear me and answer me that someone would know that you are God. Be assured today, there's some things in your life that no one can do for you but God. And if you allow him that place in, he'll prove himself and give you victory. And the victory may not come like you want it. Sometimes you have to wait. Sometimes you have to be still and know that he is God. But oh, when he comes through, he always makes his presence known. And you always know when he's around because there's no one like him. No one like him. I pray this week's exhortation has encouraged your heart, has strengthened you, has given you peace for whatever you may be going through. And know this, that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that is raised against you, you shall condemn. For this is the heritage of the saints, and their righteousness is with the Lord of hosts. Listen, I love you. I appreciate you. I'm thankful for you spending time with us on Elation Radio with the Just For You podcast. We're extremely honored when God's presence comes in and that he has his divine way. Thank you again for listening to this week's exhortation with Pastor Michelle Y. Wright. Well, listen, we are so excited because we have two phenomenal guests that are on today, and we want to begin with our brother, Calvin Logan II. He is a loving faith-filled husband and father. He has so many things that God is doing for him in his life, and he is the host of the Logan Power Show on Elation Radio. He is my brother. He is my brother. I introduce the psalm and present to others, none other than Calvin Logan II. How are you on this evening? A uh, blessing, highly favorite pastor. A blessing to be on with you. Well, listen, you know that we've got so much to talk about, but I want those that don't know you uh, to find out a little bit more about you, your uh, Logan Power show. Um, but let me just begin by saying this to the listening audience. When I met my brother, I tell you what I honor about him is not only is he a God-fearing man, but he is a phenomenal husband and family man in the church of today. We need to see more men. I honor my husband, Pastor Donald Wright Jr. He is one of the same. He loves his wife. He loves his family. My brother loves his wife and he loves his family. And that is a preface, I believe, to any stable foundation in a Christian marriage. So I want to honor you for that. I want to say hi to my sister, Jamila. God bless you guys. I love you so much. Now, would you proceed to tell people about who you are and what God is calling you to do? 
Amen. Well, thank you. God bless you. We love you, too. Uh, again, my name is Calvin Logan. Uh, yes, I am married, happily married, 16 years strong. Uh, I mm-hmm. am blessed, the father of three. Uh, the Logan Power yeah. Show uh, started in 2014. Um, it was a show that I started with TV. Um, blessed to be in the Lations Radio, going on my third or fourth year on the radio mm-hmm. side. Shout out to Dr. Timmy Robinson for uh, yeah. giving me the platform to be to be on here. Uh, so the Logan Power Show, what is here to impact not just locally, um, but also throughout the community, through the nation, and through the globe. Uh, we get all the type of uh, t- uh, questions, answers, genre of even dealing with uh, artists um, and people that's in po- po- politics, pastors, uh, you name it, social injustice issues. The Logan Power Show is making a difference. Uh, if you want to know about our bias, go to our website, www.thelogampowershow.us. You'll find us. We have a YouTube channel, The Logan Power Show, Facebook. Logan Power Show, Instagram, The Logan Power Show, and Twitter, The Logan Power, and you can email us, The Logan Power Show, at gmail.com. Uh, again, we're humble. Uh, we don't get caught up in uh, the likes or the views. We just want to put in great content, and we want to be able to make an impact in a small microcosm of time. So we definitely don't want to waste anyone's time, but we tell you, as you get on The Logan Power Show, listen to us. Um, give us an opportunity. Just like Just For You with Pastor Michelle Y. Wright, where it's going to be the right (laughs) way and it's not going the wrong way. So to God bless y'all. Well, God bless you. Well, let's dig into some really heart-to-heart today. I want to start off by saying what we were talking about. I want to ask you a question. How important is it for men to be seen um, in a positive, enlightening way? Uh, We know through the press, we know we've heard so many various different things. Would you share with the listening audience how important it is uh, to be seen in an positive and enlightening way? as a man and even a man of God. Got it. Well, definitely, <laughs> I'll, I'll say a couple of nuggets. I come out of my son's baseball game, so I'm watching from afar. Mm-hmm. Uh, what mm-hmm. I can say is um, one thing as a positive male role model, um, God brought you into this world first. Man came on the scene first. And then what happened is if you go into the Bible, Everything was put in place for him. His job was then to name it, to till, to uh, maintain it, manage it. The woman was put mm-hmm. in form. Was, when the woman came onto the scene, everything was laid out in front of her. The, the woman was a presentation to the man, and the man had the option to take, either take it or, or leave it to the wayside. But the man said, I want that particular individual. That's why Adam mm-hmm. said, I chose my wife. So mm-hmm. when, you, when you understand the importance of a man – one thing what a man will do, his job is to cover his home, not just physically, because mm-hmm. see, people get so caught up in brute strength. As you can see, brute mm-hmm. strength does not stop a bullet. Bullet, does, bullet brute strength does not does not stop a, a baseball bat, a knife. You all mm-hmm. say don't bring a knife to a gunfight, but spiritual um, warfare is where it makes even more impactful as a man. You're you're the mm-hmm. job is to be the watchman. Uh, your wife is a watchman as well, but you are the watchman. Um, your mm-hmm. daughter, if you have a if you have a daughter, the first love opposite of of the mother is you. So that's your job mm-hmm. to be your daughter's first love. Um, outside of God, God's number one, and you would be second um, as an mm-hmm. opposite person. If, when it, if you have a son, uh, your job is to be your son's same love. Like he can come to his dad with a hug and not be fearful uh, if he cries or if he's going through. Um, it's not nothing wrong with a man crying. It's just that the identity of knowing he's a man and knowing where he stands for it means a whole lot. So a father mm-hmm. coming into the role, you have a you have an anointing. Uh, if you ever see a, a, a male come into a situation, um, it changes the whole dynamics. Dynamics is like mm-hmm. a chess piece. So we have mm-hmm. to understand that a male's job is not just be there with intimacy, not just be there financially. Uh, but it's spiritually, it's time management, and brings a balance to a home. Um, yes, mm-hmm. there are. You you yes, you could raise a child 
uh, in a single parent home, either male or female, whatever it is. But I tell anybody, you cannot teach if you're a woman, you cannot teach a you cannot teach uh, a a boy to be a be a man. That's a man's realm because a man mm-hmm. has certain dynamics that the woman can only talk from her perspective, but she never talk mm-hmm. from a man's perspective. You can mm-hmm. never tell uh, a female, a girl, a young girl, what a real man looks like because if the mother's a single mother or say for instance the father's not really present. She cannot tell the young girl what to look for because, to be honest, she said, well, my daddy's not here, or say if he is here, it's been the conversation piece what's been given. So there's certain certain type of attributes that a man has that a woman can't fulfill, and there's certain attributes that a woman has that a man can't fulfill. And that's the problem that we have. We think that we can all be solved in one attribute, but it's not designed that way. And I believe that if you have more men and there's a balance, you get a, a lot of this, what we call a uh, Jezebel spirit, that stops. Mm-hmm. When you have a, mm-hmm. a, a, a balance, you, you don't have the spirit of competition where everyone's That's trying true. to squirm over this one dude. Uh, you won't have mm-hmm. this this um, situation where you think where no one's going to love you. I've always said, ladies, you know, anything, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. So if you're in the right place, right situation, already prepped and have yourself ready, let God bring him to you and be in the right place. Mm-hmm. Don't have to look, you don't have to look for him. No one, it never says in the Bible that the woman got to seek after him. No, the woman can do, can be in her right place and right mind. But a man's job, you have layers and you got to know your place and it's a balance. Yes. And I want to thank you for saying that. And I do want to piggyback on something you said about the single mothers and uh, when there's no man in the home. The reason I ask that question is for that very reason, that women need to see positive, enlightening men in our community, in our churches, everywhere they go, whether they are um, husbands, whether they are brothers, whether they are fathers, because the image that men portray are supposed to be in the likeness of God. So to a single mother who has no husband in the home but does have a heart for God, or maybe she doesn't even know God, what does that look like to her? Uh, And you explained about the men and what their balance is. But in our community today, in our neighborhoods today, uh, it's very vital. When your father isn't in the home, when that man isn't in the home, what is the man's role in the community and the church of today? Uh, the man's role in the church of the day is to be the overseer, not just overseer yeah. the church, but the overseer of the community. You know, a lot of times mm-hmm. people get so caught up in if a, if a woman's an apostle or a pastor or whatever it is. Now that it goes mm-hmm. way beyond that. You can Come like on. a man can be can be the pastor of the community and with no building. Mm-hmm. When you see mm-hmm. uh, uh, the problem we have is we think it's always brick and mortar. Would you need positive is- male role models to be able to to able to snatch out the wicked wolves that are lurking in those in those potholes, foxholes that are out there, and you drag those foxes out and you kick them out the community. If you have a lot of positive mm-hmm. role models and, and males that are straightforward, um, have a no conviction, uh, have a, a, a no compromising lifestyle, you set a mm-hmm. standard. When you set a standard, mm-hmm. then you pretty much eliminate compromising. You eliminate... Uh, demonic forces coming in and trampling the neighborhood. So that, well, that's what it is. Mm-hmm. You got to be a watchman. You need men have to be watchmen in this time. They have to be intercessors. You need more male intercessors. You need also it's not just teachers. It's intercessors and taking mm-hmm. those roles, those tough role model uh, situations, where it's not just your a sports or you're a coach. But you're in the community, mm-hmm. either helping with the homework. There's so many things that we can do that, that we that we mm-hmm. miss out on. And I think that a lot mm-hmm. of times we always think it's just brute strength. But, no, it's intellect, mm-hmm. wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. And when you have that, the community will thrive. 
I believe that, and I agree with you. And you said something that is dear to my heart, and that is about serving. Um, there are, I had a friend, um, God bless him, he's going on to be with the Lord. What I loved about him, he was a teacher. But in his classroom, it would be hilarious, but he was very sincere. He would call all his little students sister or brother, right? And so those young ladies that didn't have a father, he actually went on that when one of his students graduated and they got old enough to get married, Mary, they invited him to the wedding because of his presence in the classroom. And one of the greatest things that is home going was to see that picture of his student and him dancing because he took the role of not just being a teacher, but being attentive to the needs of the students and being able to give them what God had imparted in him for the community that he was serving in to become stronger and that they would dispel those myths that men are not good or men are dogs or whatever the world would say. And so I asked you that because I recognize you're that type of man. Now, before I let you go, I want to ask you a question. And all over the country, we've heard about what has gone on with this verdict for George Floyd and his family. I thank the Lord that we did get a favorable verdict. But as we said in the beginning, there are two families' lives that are being dealt with at this time. Can you say to the listening audience your heart's desire and what you felt, not so much at the moment when the verdict was because it's over now, God has served justice, but yet there's still continuing strategies that we need to do in our communities, in our churches, uh, wherever we serve, that we can see a difference in what we're doing. So can you speak to that and what the listening audience would need to know that you felt in that moment and how your perception as a man of God, what you felt? Sure. Uh, For that situation, number one, um, it's not over with yet. The people have to understand that it's it's still up up hurdles and battles you have to face. To be able to get stuff done, it's going to take phases, but you still have to be mm-hmm. – ste- ste- uh, keep your foot on the stronghold's neck. What I mean by that, it's going to require strong legislation. Um, yes. It's going to require when people go to the police academy that they're going to learn mm-hmm. this is how you handle these um, abrupt situations. You have to uh, – number three, you have to find out to have a jury that's non-biased and create a more mm-hmm. fair share across the board. Another number four mm-hmm. is that put the right legislators in place. And then number five mm-hmm. is hold everyone accountable, not just mm-hmm. the police, ourselves, because mm-hmm. right now it's hold everyone accountable. And the other thing is, too, don't let hate creep in that you caught a, Come caught, on. You, you caused a racial divide, but you have not, you have not have caused a reform. Like I said, you can say right now that police, you can you if you want to label it with a color, then you pretty much have missed the point. Because I tell you mm-hmm. right now, police situations, military got issues too. It's never really mm-hmm. been brought to the light light like it is. There's things that mm-hmm. go on education that goes on. It's mm-hmm. not really brought to the light. There is oppression. There is mm-hmm. racial disparity, and it's very mm-hmm. real. Just what you're seeing right now. Um, this this injustice is not just one time. This has happened for centuries. Right. This is not nothing new. You just saw it in in the past. Let's say fifty years. You've only seen two officers that have that are serving time. One, mm-hmm. uh, well, three. That's the Minneapolis officer, the black man who killed mm-hmm. the white lady. But the reason why his mm-hmm. thing was swift, quick, so on and so forth, kind of funny. Michael Schlager, the one who killed Walter Scott. He did not mm-hmm. go. To, he did not go to state, state state penitentiary. He did not get found guilty for his actions. What it was obstruction of things that he did and evidence. So he got caught in federal. That's what people don't understand. The people don't understand it, that his situation was a federal situation. How they saw it. Otherwise, he would have walked. And the reason mm-hmm. why. So you've only seen in lifetime, lifetime right now, two to three officers really held to accountable to the strength of the law, but the biggest concern that you'll see in the next eight weeks is what will the judge give as a sentence? I tell people all the time, you you can give someone 20, 30, 40, 
50 years, 100, they're still not going to bring back that person mm-hmm. that was lost. And the problem mm-hmm. that people don't understand is is that you did not know that man's name until mm-hmm. the echoing of of blood kept on being uh, being actually echoed. It's like when Cain killed Abel, Abel's mm-hmm. blood spoke. That's what happened. Mm-hmm. So a man's a man's life was lost. You would give that family forty eight billion dollars. But it, yeah. all you would have said was that is a that is a that is the actual cost for a dead man and that high stakes. But if that's yeah. the case, if you want to be a martyr or lose your life in that regard, I tell people all the time, it is not worth not one penny. Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. being honest with you. I certainly thank you. I appreciate you being on today and excellent information that you've given us. And we appreciate the work that you're doing with the Logan Power Show. May God continue to bless you and your wife and your family. And we thank you for giving your information. Listen, I highly recommend that if you are a listener of radio and you want to learn more about our brother Calvin Logan, please look him up on the Logan Power Show and all the attributes that he's giving you and connect up with him. May God bless you. We thank you so much for being on and may you have a beautiful and blessed day. And we're even believing God for a win for your son. How about that? Amen. Well, God bless you too, Pastor Right, <laughs> God bless everybody just for you. It's the right way, yes. not the highway. God bless y'all. <laughs> That's it. I love you, brother. Have a blessed one. Well, listen, I want to thank you for listening in and learning more about our brother, Calvin Logan. He has a phenomenal show. Please check him out. Our next guest is Jasmine Johnson Anderson. She is a creative, anointed woman of God. She's a ministry leader, and she also is a prophetic dancer. I love her so much. She has so much to offer, and she has a YouTube show called Hey, It's Desiree. With no other long waiting, I want to introduce Introduce to some and present to others, Jasmine Johnson Anderson. How are you on this evening? Are Hi. you there? Hi, how Hi. are you? Can you hear me? Hello? I can hear you. How are you? Oh, okay, good. I am good. I'm so happy to be on here with you guys. Well, listen, we're happy to have you, and we would love for you to share about your beautiful life. I want to say hey to our other counterpart, your husband, and thank God for you being here on today. So for those who don't know you, would you share with them who you are, and we'll get into a little bit after you talk about that, your show, Hey, It's Desiree. Sure. So I am Jasmine Desiree Johnson Anderson, <laughs> long name. Um, yes. I am a wife, um, kind of newlywed. We've been married. We're going on two years now. Um, yes. And ministry is basically my life, basically what mm-hmm. I am going for for the rest of my life. I'm 26, so I'm still fairly young. Mm-hmm. And... Mm-hmm. Um, I lead the AYM ministry, which is our teenage ministry at Diverse City Church. Um, and so that's kind of where I started with ministry. But within the last, um, I guess, what, year and a half now, I have started Hey Desiree. Mm. And um, so that's been such a fun, exciting journey. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, let me say this, um, that you definitely have a beautiful presence, not only with people, but I love your heart of serving. I've been able to serve with you um, for a various event, and I'm telling you, you bless my soul with your dancing um, and your praise and worship. I know your heart is sold out for the Lord, and we so appreciate you in all that you do. Let's talk about, hey, it's Desiree. So when you came up with this concept, what made you sit 
sit down and say, listen, I need to do more. I know I'm in ministry. I know I dance. I do these things for the Lord. What gave you the go-ahead and the push for, hey, it's Desiree? So when I think back to the beginning of my walk, um, something that helped me immensely was YouTube. Um, mm-hmm. I was, I was, I grew up in the church, but I had a falling away, and I became mm-hmm. very mistrustful mm-hmm. church and with pastors and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. when God was first bringing me back through my friend Lee, which I'm just forever grateful um, that He mm-hmm. just continued to share Jesus with me. Um, he loved YouTube as well. And so me mm-hmm. and him, we worked a cleaning job and we would mm-hmm. send each other YouTube videos, whether they be sermons, whether they be, um, you know, I'm, I'm people, I, people get a bad rap for this, but what people would say, conspiracy theories, all that stuff, um, mm-hmm. that really kind of swung me in the way of finding Christ and, um, mm-hmm. really looking to the Bible for answers. Um, And so when I thought about that, like, I watched it all the time, and I'm like, why don't I just do it? And I'm like, you Mm -hmm. know, at first I was scared. I'm like, no, you know, I'll stick to my my teens. I'll stick to my kids, you know. And um, God really was tugging on my heart to start this ministry. So I was like, why not? I'll just do it. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I've grown so much from just Mm -hmm. doing it. God has really been giving me revelation and really um, just showing out with this ministry. And I can't, I know it's going to grow and I'm just excited for it all. Well, you know, it's something to be said. You mentioned something that I do believe that people need to understand the power of social media. It isn't that social media is bad. It's how we utilize social media. And for young people, and you are a young lady, I want to share with uh, the listening audience how vital that is because there are people that may never, ever get to personally meet you. But watching Hey, It's Desiree, they can go online at any time of the day. Isn't that powerful? social media they don't have to they know what time you may be on but for whatever way reason they miss you they can go back watch your videos and see just what God is doing in the midst of all that he's blessed you with so you mentioned something yeah. that you had a falling away you came back it's important for people to understand no matter what age you are that we all can get in these predicaments of life and then we find ourselves needing a savior and now that you found him you're doing something that I think is absolutely phenomenal, and that is serving. Not only serving him with your heart, but with mankind. Talk to us about your teen ministry that you're over. Yes. So it's called Aftershock Youth Ministry at Diverse City Church. Um, We have teens anywhere from 13 to 18, um, and then they age out into the young adult ministry when they turn 19. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's just been phenomenal. Um, we have done all kinds of topics. I feel like so one of the reasons why God put it on my heart to work with the teen um, mm-hmm. is because when I was 17, I was prophesied over that I would someday mm-hmm. help women and teens. And at the time, I didn't understand why. <laughs> well, fast mm-hmm. forward a couple of years, I found out why I really struggled in in my early womanhood, in my um, teenage years, the rest of my, well, really I had been struggling, but I wasn't thinking about it like that. And mm-hmm. God really put it on my heart to tell the truth. One of the reasons mm-hmm. why I fell away was because I was catching so many lies on things that I have mm-hmm. learned. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mm-hmm. feel like a lot of the time, a lot of my generation specifically, we have other other gods, other, you know, religions mm-hmm. and all this other stuff because we felt like our answers weren't getting, our questions weren't getting answered in the church. Mm-hmm. And so I try to make it a fact to talk about, um, you know, the Holy Spirit and and talk about these things that are trying to play like the Holy Spirit and, you know, all the chakras and, you know, all mm-hmm. these different things that are pulling our generation and pulling their gener- generation away from Christ. And I'm giving it to them from a biblical sense, and um, I'm just mm-hmm. being as transparent as I can um, for their mm-hmm. area, for their age group. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And I um, love that because, you know, serving young people, like you said, is a huge job, especially teenagers. They're in that in-between. I am growing from childhood, going into teenagers, so it's a little different. I honor you because you can be transparent. I wanted you to continue on, but I wanted to say that because it's so important because we wonder now why young people don't like coming to church. And part of it is what you just said. They found things that are not consistent. Maybe they're not having things. How important is it for a youth leader of today to be current with the times and the things? What makes ministry work for young people from your point of view as a youth leader? Oh, yes, it's extremely important um, Mm -hmm. just to know what's going on Um, Mm -hmm. because a lot of the disconnect sometimes is that they don't feel like that we understand them. I remember feeling Mm -hmm. that way when I was their age. Mm -hmm. And so one is paying attention to what's going on, Um, Mm -hmm. just keeping your eyes open, keeping your eyes open on social media, what's trending Mm -hmm. right now. It sounds crazy enough. Um, we don't want to get we don't want to get you know caught up in the world this that, and the other, but we have to know what they're talking about because when Cardi mm-hmm. B and um, mm-hmm. Meg Stallion dropped that video, video you best believe mm-hmm. we talked about modesty. Yes, um, yes. Because I was just, I don't even want to get into that. That blew me away. Yeah, but, but I'm with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have to we have to keep up with the times, but also. Having a good relationship with them. Um, I want mm-hmm. my teens to feel they can come to me no matter what. Now, I've made it also very clear that, you know, if I feel like you're in danger or something, you know, yeah. I'm going to talk to your parents. But I like to have mm-hmm. a, a good relationship with them where we can, where they can trust me and they can come to me with mm-hmm. their questions. They can come to me with their problems. They can come to me for prayer, whatever advice, whatever the case may be. I just like to keep communication open between them and my other leader Robert Nelson he's also very good they're very comfortable mm-hmm. with him as well mhm mhm and that is the so biggest cool. thing being comfortable and staying up with the time um because no team's going to come to you if the bull and no team's going to come to you if they um feel like you're just completely disconnected and will never understand and that is the 100% truth. And you did say something about Cardi B and Megan the Sound, and I will say this, you know, it is very important that we understand what our children are listening to, what they're watching on TV, because it does affect their psyche. It affects the environment they live in. And, of course, being in schools and having friends, and whether they're virtual or whether they're actually in person, if you don't know what's going on, you're going to be misled. Some of the things that, that I used to be a PT president and it was so amazing to me when we would talk to the parents about hey are you familiar with this they had no clue right so sometimes there are certain websites certain things that kids go on they have all kinds of things going on listen you can find out about the fight in school on tomorrow if you on a certain site tonight it's just unreal how they communicate by text and with uh, social media so I honor you for letting that be known because a lot of times we can be so spiritual we miss it. You got it? We can miss it, and right. the children suffer because there's no one listening. And so I thank you, and I'm uh, so appreciative of the work that you're doing, not only in the church and the community, in your personal life, uh, for letting your light shine, because it's very important as believers that we don't hide our lights, that we don't not let people know who Jesus is. If someone was listening out here and they're saying, hey, you know, I'm a parent, I really don't know what else I can do with my child. As a youth leader, can you encourage that grandmother, that aunt, that sister, that brother, whoever it may be that are dealing with teenagers, to give them some hope not to give up, but to continually look to the hill from whence cometh their help, because the Lord is there. Can you encourage them right now? Yes, definitely. Um, Because really, I will say this, prayer. Prayer is huge. Prayer works. My mom was praying for me. When I had lost my mind, y'all, I was so deep in sin. I had, like, joined a cult. Like, I was, I denounced 
Christ. I had, you mm-hmm. know, I was way out there. And by the prayers mm-hmm. of my mom, by the prayers of my family, mm-hmm. by the prayers of mm-hmm. in, in my church, I didn't even know these people yet. And mm-hmm. they were praying for me. And mm-hmm. I am now back to Christ and living for him. Mm-hmm. And so I want you to, I want you guys to know that prayer is not unheard. Um, and sometimes, yes, you have to keep praying. My mom was praying for years. Mm-hmm. And don't give up. Don't give up because prayer, God knows your heart. When you raise a child up correctly, he will always come back. Mm-mm-mm. What an awesome Are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, Uh uh-huh. What an awesome testimony, and I definitely know that you love the Lord. It's in everything that you're doing, your heart, your beautiful smile. And also we're praying and and praising God for two years of marriage, being young. Um, For those that are waiting on a mate, I want you to encourage them as well because sometimes I think the church can sometimes, I won't say the church, but I'll say People can put an expectation on people at different ages about marriage and about Mm -hmm. um, if you're not married, you're not whole and all of these things. Can you encourage the singles that are listening uh, before your mate came and just how to hold on until God blesses them? Yes, Um, definitely God knows your heart. And a lot of the times I think that we give up on God. We think that um, he's forgotten about us, but really this is just a part of your testimony. And I will say something um, that I focused really hard on was, one, my relationship with Christ himself mm-hmm. before I mm-hmm. found a mate. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of T-O-U. Um, it's like a, a, a school for singles. It's a Christian school mm-hmm. for singles, and they teach you how to be whole by yourself and with Christ, and they teach you how to gain your relationship. They set you up to be a full whole without that other half, with that, without mm-hmm. that other whole, really. And so um, doing things like that, I suggest reading books, getting the things that you need to get done now, because when you get married, it's a whole new ball game. It is like doing mm-hmm. starting – I won't say starting over, but you're starting afresh. Um, So Mm -hmm. everything changes. And so use this time to be productive. Use this time to get your relationship correct with the Lord and and just feel comfort and let him fill you up. And I guarantee if if you put him first in your life, he will give you your heart's desires. He says that Mm -hmm. no man should be alone. When 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 man was alone, it was the one thing that God said was not good. Um, so He doesn't mm. want you to be alone, but He wants you to be whole in Him before you are whole in somebody else. And maybe sometimes mm-hmm. you may even be there, but this is a part of your testimony. This is something mm-hmm. that will get somebody else saved. So always remember, everything happens for a reason. God does not let um you suffer for no reason. Amen. Amen. I thank God for you on today. And just so those of you uh, have wanted to get connected with Desiree and, hey, it's Desiree, would you give them your contact information that they're able to contact you and let them know how um, what's best for you for them to contact you as a listening audience? Yes. Yeah, so always definitely um, comments on my videos on YouTube because um, I do comment back. Um, also on Instagram, my name is Jasmine Desiree, J A S M I N E D E S E R A E. Um, and on Messenger, I am Jasmine Johnson Anderson. Mhm. 
All righty. And so you have her listening audience. You have her information. Please connect up with her. She's a wonderful young lady. I know her personally. I know her in the family. You know, she's letting her yes. light shine. And we're so grateful for her. Uh, there's something about her spirit that is so contagious. So I encourage you to please look her up, connect with her, go on her YouTube page, comment that she'll know that you're listening and that you're uh, also, pray for her. Pray for her and pray for Calvin and all that they are doing. Pray for Elation Radio and all of us that are on the air. Prayer is important and it makes a difference. I want to thank you so much today for being on, Jasmine. We love you so very, very much. And we're looking forward to having you on again. Continue the great work that you're doing, that the Lord may continue to walk with you, talk with you, and bless you in all that your hands will touch to prosper. Amen. And God bless you to your pastor as well. God bless you. Tell my cousin your. Your hubby high for us all, too, okay? God bless you. (laughs) Yes. Well, thank you for listening in for the Just For You podcast. We're coming to a close of another podcast, but I want to encourage you on today. If this is your birthday month, we celebrate you here at Just For You. We appreciate you. And if no one's ever told you they love you, we want you to know we love you. And we want to let you to know that if you've graduated or you're in process of a graduation, we're celebrating that with you as well. Perhaps you just got married, had a baby, whatever the case may be, know that just for you, we're here. And maybe something else is going on. Maybe you've had a loss of a loved one. You're going through something. Uh, life hasn't been so kind. We want you to know here it just for you. We are praying for you. There are times when we can't make it through a situation without the help of the Lord, and prayer is needed. Prayer is essential. And here, and just for you, we are praying for you. We also want you to know if you are in need, there are various opportunities and organizations that are having various events and offering resources and services. On this weekend, Uh, The Direct Senior Services, they are located at 3721 South Grand in St. Louis, Missouri, zip code 63118. They will be having their half fair. That means you can come out, you can go through various tables, you will be able to connect with other people. It will be COVID safe, so we ask that everyone that will be attending any event, please wear your mask. Please protect yourselves, and if you are a little under the weather, it may not be a bad idea to be at home. Uh, We want you to make sure that you consider everyone around you, Uh, and this, I believe, God is getting us through. I know it looked hopeless two years ago, everybody. A year ago, we were just like devastated when the pandemic held. But I always believe this. There's nothing that will happen that God isn't fully in control over. So I want you to be encouraged, and I want you to look to the hills from whence cometh your help. Uh, We want you to connect up with businesses and people that offer services, such as United Way. They have a re I mean, a serious, serious uh, list of people that can assist you in various areas. Please give them a contact at 211. You have Urban League St. Louis who are out here serving. They have various food drives. They have different resources that they can help you with. Please make sure you contact them at ULS. TL.org. Also, if you are interested in having your taxes done and you have some other things that you need, there's some information you'd like about PPP, I want you to know, please, by all means, contact Dr. Kimmy Robinson. She has a load of information that she can give you that will bless you and that will get you what you need. Listen, this is a phenomenal woman that has a lot that she offers, and it's bigger than just radio. Please connect up with her. The number is 314-546-8562. 
seven with her wise consulting. And I'm sorry if I don't have it correct in front of me. I know it's wise, but please, by all means, contact her. Also, I want to give a shout out to Power to Stand Ministries. They're doing a phenomenal work, and we want to thank you for inviting us on to be a guest speaker for your Women's Day on this past Sunday. What a time, what a time we had. It was blessed, and we want to honor you for what you're doing. You're going to hear more from them in upcoming weeks. Also, we want to thank Calvin Logan. We were a guest on his show. We want to let you know you're doing a phenomenal job. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you're interested in having Pastor Michelle Wright contact me, uh, if you're interested in me being a guest speaker or some other things that you feel that we can be of service to you, please contact me. You can contact me on Facebook under Michelle, M-I-C-H-E-L-E, Wright, W-R-I-G-H-T. You can do that same thing on LinkedIn. On Instagram, it's His Blessed Girl 7, H I S B L E S S E D G I R L, the number 7. And also, if you'd like to contact me by email, you can do so at leadingright at gmail.com. I will be happy to speak back with you, and that is L-E-A-D-I-N-G-W-R-I-G-H-T. Well, listen, I thank you so much for listening again this week. Please remember to pray for all this week. We're going to stand in agreement in prayer. Remember the Floyd family. Remember the upcoming services for Mr. Wright out of Minneapolis. We are praying for the families, and even locally, even in your family, even your neighborhood, let's not just be just all over in our United States, but sometimes that prayer is needed right in our own households. We want you to know we're praying. We're praying for Pastor Donald Wright and his healing. Let's believe in God with all of you for whatever it is you need. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for coming in. Thank you for blessing the podcast and being with each of our guests. Thank you for Dr. Kimmy Robinson, our Elation family. Thank you for Pastor Donald Wright. And God, I thank you that none of this could be possible without you and the listeners. So would you bless them, their homes, their lives, their children, whatever it is that's on their hearts and their minds, that you meet the need and help them to be stronger and help them that don't know you to come to know you because without you. Life can be rough, but we decree and declare today salvation, deliverance, and healing, and we trust you to make a way out of no way for your people. And Lord, because we're praying, we believe we're two or three are gathered in your name. You are in the midst of us, and we thank you for just showing up and being a part of this podcast. Would you not only bless this podcast, but everyone that's serving you and doing a work for you, and that they are out in the field. They're serving, not just in the brick and mortar, but they are your people. They are what you've ordained for this hour. Help us to lift them up, to support them, and to love on them. And then, God, I ask for those that don't know which way to go. We pray for Derek Chauvin. We're not praying that, God, you just give him the worst. We're praying that you save him. And anyone that is doing the ill will that they have done in the community, we're asking for salvation on this day. We know you're a God of justice. We know that the systems are set up. But save on today. Heal and deliver. And not just him, but all that need a touch from you, O God. We pray, O God, for the jurors that they return home to families unharmed. And God, that they live their lives peaceably after such a well-publicized case. God, help them on today, the judge and the attorneys and all that are involved. And thank you, O oh God, for this family who now can get some relief, O oh God, for what has taken place. But be with them in the years and the months and the days ahead, God, and give us all a heart to forgive, not just in this case, but in our lives and personal matters, things that we need to address. We ask for forgiveness, oh God, and then we want to forgive others that you may be 
over our lives to forgive us. So, God, let us be mindful that forgiveness is necessary. Now, Lord, we ask for those unspoken requests that we may not have prayed, but that you know all about. We ask you to come in and have your divine way. We thank you. We praise you. We honor you. We lift you up, and we recognize, oh, God, that there is none like you and that you're able to do anything but fail. We say thank you, and we praise you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. We also want to give a shout-out to Church of the Living God 360, where we were your speaker for Resurrection Sunday. God bless you. We love you so much. And to all of the ministries, pastors that are listening in and that are doing this work, be encouraged. God is with us, and he will not fail. Lord, we thank you. So until next time, meet us here again on Wednesdays, Lord willing, 5.30 p.m. Central Standard Time on Elation Radio. And we'll be glad to connect up with you. May God bless you, keep you, and cause his face to shine upon you and keep you well, healthy, and whole. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Glory to God.